Hey, welcome. Today we're going to learn how to contribute to an open source project from beginning to end. So let's get started. Here are the steps that you need to follow. First, you need to find a project. Second, you need to decide whether to contribute to this project. Third, you need to read the documentation and understand the concept of this project. Fourth, you need to find something to work on. Fifth, you need to ask for more information or clarification. Sixth is when you actually work on the project. And seven is when you submit your solution with a pull request. So let's start by finding a project. So the first thing that you should do is to think of all the tools and libraries and technologies that you're using and see whether some of them are open source or not. That would actually make it easier for you to understand the context of this project and also to contribute to it. For example, PyTorch is a library that we use for machine learning and it's also open source, so you can contribute to it if you're already using it. But if you don't have any ideas for that, there are some websites that would be very helpful for you to get started. For example, GitHub, great for new contributors website, features a bunch of projects that are great for new contributors because they are known to be friendly, they're known to be active. You can just look through some of these projects to see if there is anything that catches your attention. There are also a bunch of other websites, for example, up for grabs also lists a bunch of projects that you can contribute to. Or Code Triage, for example, has a bunch of projects again listed with the amount of issues that they have and if you click on them with more information. But there are a bunch of other more websites out there that you can use as a first time contributor. I will have a full list in the description below. Once you find a project that you want to contribute to, you should first evaluate if it is a good project for new contributors. So I'll show you some criteria on the YouTube DL library that I use quite often, and it is a open source uh, library. First of all, to understand if it's actually an open source library, you should check out some of the documentation. For example, it has to have a license to understand if it's an open source uh, project or not. And then there are sometimes some other documentation, for example, code of conduct or a contributing uh, documentation to tell you how you should contribute and what are the steps involved. And then you should check how many commits have been done and when was the last commit. So you don't want to work on a project where people have already forgotten about. The next thing to take a look at is the issues. So how many issues are there? When a new issue is being posted, is someone responding? Is a maintainer responding to these issues? So let's see, for example, this issue was posted three days ago and we see that someone already responded to it. We also want to check if people are raising the issues uh, recently. So we see that there are issues. The latest issue is from only 17 hours ago. And we see that a lot of issues are being raised. And we also want to see are these issues being closed or only people creating or raising these issues. But we see very recently, two days ago uh, or yesterday or uh, three days ago, new issues were being closed. That, so that tells us that people are working on these issues actively and that makes it a good project to work on. Next, we want to look at the pull requests because that's how people contribute to open source projects. We want to see if there are new pull requests that are being opened and we see that you know there is one from three days ago, nine days ago. And you also want to see if someone is responding, responding to these pull requests. So we see here again that someone, um, very likely a maintainer, uh, said to this person who worked on this issue, Thanks for your work. I made some suggestions and comments. It should be good to go soon. That's also a nice thing to know. You want to see that the maintainers or the people responsible for this project are thanking the people who are contributing to this project. You don't want to uh, be dismissed very easily, right? You want to see that they are appreciative of your work. And the last thing that you want to see is whether they are giving you feedback when they are rejecting your uh, pull request. So if we can find a pull request that was rejected we see that this person made a pull request and uh, yeah we see a whole discussion that went on here it's nice to know that even if you do a lot of work and it gets rejected at the end you will be able to get some feedback on the work that you've done so knowing all of these things actually tells us that this is a good project to contribute to it is friendly it is open and it wants more people to join 
uh, in it and contribute to it. So the next thing that you want to do is to understand a project a little bit better. And there is no other way to understand a project better than to read the documentation. This might be a project that you already worked on. So maybe you already know how it works and what it does, but it's already a good idea to kind of understand the jargon and the terms that are being used by the developers and the contributors in this project to read the readme generally, just to kind of uh, glance through it. And you can also read the documentation quickly. Um, you can read the contributing documentation here. Here, for example, is for developers, some instructions. And some projects also have a code of conduct. So I can show you that on this other library. And this code of conduct tells us basically the vision of this project. So they don't have it on GitHub here, they have it on a separate website, but basically they talk about what is important to the people who are developing this project, what is the vision, what is the kind of context that they're going for. That's important to know also, just to kind of understand um, the general vision and where this project is going to when you want to add some new code to it or maybe a new feature to it. So after reading the documentation, understanding the project a little bit better, and after reading the contribution documentation to understand how you can contribute, what are the steps that are involved, the next thing to do is to find an issue that you can work on. So there are a bunch of ways how you can do that. One of them is just to go to the documentation page of this project and literally look for typos. So this is the documentation of YouTube, the DL algorithm. And it could be as simple as finding a typo, maybe install was typed incorrectly, or there is a sentence that is not 100% clear. You can basically just make, it, make a contribution by fixing that sentence and making a pull request. Another thing you can do is to go to the issues that are already open, so you don't have to find a new issue, and uh, filter the issues with the label good first issue. Uh, many open source projects have this. So if you just filter with good first issue, you will see a bunch of open issues that would be uh, good for first time contributors to uh, contribute with. So for example, let's say we want to deal with this issue. Uh, you can go here. It also gives you a nice idea of how the issues are created, uh, what problems people are having. Um, you will be able to read the, the description and maybe there's going to be a discussion that already happened here. You should read through all of this before deciding to work on this, of course. And if you decide to work on it at the end, you can leave a comment and say, hey, I want to take this on. I want to work on this project. It's also good to see that no one else has already said that and that no one else is working on it already. And if you have any other questions or if you want to ask for clarification, this would be also a good place to um, ask about it because this is where the issue is. So you shouldn't create a new issue asking about it. And the last and a little bit more advanced way of finding things to work on is you can look for the word to do in this repository. And many times you would see, maybe you already experienced it yourself too, when you're developing code, sometimes you just write something that you think that needs to be done in the future, but it's not the highest priority. You think that you'll do it in the future, but you never actually get to it. And these code bases, of course, are full of those things. So you can just look for a to-do and see what needed to be done, understand this code, and maybe create an issue and say, hey, I'm going to work on this now. The fifth step of asking for clarification is not a must do, of course. If you're just fixing maybe some typos in the documentation, you don't really have to uh, ask for more clarification or uh, tell people that you're working on it. But if you're offering maybe a new feature, if you're offering a big fix, you should always let people know that you're working on it. If you are uh, working on a specific issue, you should probably... Um, ask for clarification on anything that you don't understand inside this issue, as I've already said, uh, and also let people know that you are working on this issue before you get started. All right, so now for the fun part. When you want to contribute to a project, when you already found the issue that you want to work in, the first thing that you should do is to fork it. Forking it means that you're going to copy all of this code into your own um, account in a way. So, and that's what you're going to uh, work on. You're going to work on this copy. So you are not going to affect the actual code that other people might be working on. Now I want to get this code on my um, local drive so that I can work on it on my ID uh, of preference. So I'll just start the terminal here, make it bigger so you can see. Um, I will navigate to my desktop and maybe make a directory here where I call open source. 
and inside open source, I will clone the code that I just forked. Once you have your code already here in your uh, local drive, and before you do any changes, you should again go and uh, look at the contributing guide because there could be some specific ways that they want you to do the changes and document the changes. So it's always a good idea to make sure that what you're doing matches the rules of this open source project. And most of the time, they're going to have a step-by-step -step guide for you to uh, do some changes in the code. Next, we want to create a new branch to work on our changes in the code or in the documentation. First, I want to see which branch I'm on already. I'm on master. So I want to create a new branch with uh, whatever name it can say, Mustra's contribution. Uh, and then I'll see that I'm still on master. So I'm going to change it to Mustra's contribution branch. So now if I check where I am, it'll tell me that I'm on the Mustra's contribution branch. So now I can open the code in the code editor that I like, and let's change something for now, um, just so that we can see how the, the pull request uh, process works. So for that, let's say I'm just going to remove this, etc. here. All right, so what I want to do before I push my changes is to make sure that nothing has changed in the original project. So if you remember, I'm in the Mustros contribution branch. I'm going to go back to the original branch and then I'm going to do a git pull. Everything's up to date, but you know, sometimes maybe the issue that you're working on takes a couple of days and maybe even weeks. So you wanna make sure that you are staying up to date with the actual code that other people are working on too. Uh, and then I want to go back to Mustra's contribution. And I'll do another git pull again. Um, I see that, okay, there is nothing that has already changed here either. Um, the next thing that I want to do, let's clear the terminal, is to add all of these changes together if you did multiple, and then say commit. If you are changing or fixing anything specific that is mentioned in the issues, here is a good place to specify it and reference it. For example, you can say issue number 37 sold or uh, fixed, you can say. But if that is not the case, which is not the case for us, I can just say updating readme getting rid of extra words, for example, just to kind of explain what you're doing here. And then I say get push. And I would like to push the branch of the same name on the remote. So I use the second suggestion that they mentioned. And my changes are now on GitHub. Now that my changes are on GitHub, when I visit the GitHub page again, here is what I see. I say Mistress Contribution had recent pushes less than a minute ago. And here is how I create a pull request. So I just click compare and pull request. What you want to do is to make sure that you are pushing to the base branch of the original repository from the Mustros contribution branch of your forked repository. So here they already filled in some things for you to uh, fill in, but this is a good point to go back to the contribution documentation to understand if there are any patterns that you need to follow, if there is any extra information that you need to include. Sometimes they would like to see uh, screenshots, for example, of the change. And once you're done with all of this, what you need to do is to say create pull request and your pull request, your contribution request will be sent to the main repository of this project. One little note here, if you're still working on the code and you're not done with it, but you want some feedback, you can also instead say create draft pull request. And that way you're telling people that this is still ongoing work, but you want them to take a look at it. Once you create a pull request, of course, it might take a little bit of time to get some feedback. Your changes might be rejected, your changes might be accepted, or maybe they will have some feedback or comments for you to uh, work on and make some changes to. So just keep in mind that this is an open source project. A lot of people are working on it. There are a lot of contributors and we're trying to keep a friendly and open community to work together and learn together and grow together. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment down below. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.